Earlier this week, I was able to see Monkey Man at its world premiere at South by Southwest. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your excitement level for Monkey Man and if you're in the future and you've already seen it, let me know what you thought about it. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I saw the film at South by Southwest. That is a film festival, it's also a music festival, it's also a tech festival. It's a lot of different things. I, of course, was there for the film festival where I got to see a whole bunch of world premieres for some movies I'll be talking about over the next few days. And one of the ones I was most excited to check out was Monkey Man, which was written, directed, and stars Dev Patel. And essentially, based off the interviews that he gave before and after the film, this was kind of him trying to put all of his influences from action movies, from culture, from his upbringing into this one project. I love action movies, so naturally I was very interested to check it out. With that said, let's get started with the good. And with Monkey Man, Dev Patel has delivered a wild ride with his directorial debut. It's filled with action, style, lore, culture, and tragic characters. Like, if you boil it down to its most basic plot synopsis, it's a classic revenge story about someone who's wronged trying to get vengeance on the person that hurt his family. But then he takes that simple revenge story and it just puts it in the context of this individual city and culture. He fills it with the um, lore that he was kind of raised on and the character of Hanuman and fleshes out all this stuff around it. So it, it has so much depth and layers to it while at its core being very straightforward with its narrative. And that just kind of makes it pop. While it is a directorial debut, he comes in trying to make his mark and do something interesting. In the kind of interviews before the film started, he talked about how he just loves all of these classic, straightforward action films, but he wanted to bring a little bit more depth, a little bit more of his background and the tales that he was grown up, he grew up with, into the story to kind of make it a more fulfilling and holistic experience as a film. And all of that I thought was kind of what made the movie pop a little bit more. Like some people have said, oh, this is like the Indian John Wick. It's really not that at all. <laughs> um, like you have him in a suit in a high class establishment with stylized light beating people up. But outside of that, the nature of the story, the storytelling is, is really nothing like John Wick. And it's not trying to be John Wick, other than just some superficial imagery, perhaps. Speaking of the action in the movie, when it goes down, it's designed to be very brutal. Very much this character that's a scrapper, that grabs anything that he can to try and defeat the enemy, like desperately trying to defeat the opponents in front of him. So if it's a glass, it's a mug, if it's a piece of glass on the ground, he's just grabbing whatever he can, slamming their face into whatever is right in front of him. And it just makes for an intense, brutal feel to it because just the urgency of desperation in each of the fight scenes. And along those same lines, with the character, it's designed to kind of show him progressing. So he's very chaotic at the beginning of it and much more self-assured by the end of the film. So even in the movie, the style of the action, the choreography, even kind of the way that it's filmed progresses as the character progresses. Each of the fights are shot in a manner where the camera's kind of far enough back that you can track along with everything that you're seeing, but also close enough that you feel present in the action as it's taking place. As I mentioned earlier in this, it is very much a story about tragic characters. So it, it treats our character's backstory as this mystery. We sort of start in the day of, of the life of this character and you can tell he's working towards something. You can tell he has his eye on a target and that's his objective, but we don't fully know exactly what's driving all of this. And we keep getting these glimpses and we piece it together, but it kind of creates a mystery in the story that hooks you, draws you in just enough as you want to see how this is all going to play out. And much like the way that it develops his fighting style, 
as the movie progresses, kind of builds out the lore, the scope, and the size of the threat that he's after. Where early on in the film, it seems like, oh, he's just got to get this guy. And you realize it actually ties into something much bigger than that as the film goes along. And kind of to that point, I talk about how he's trying to pull in all these different influences where it's got culture, it's got lore, and there's even elements of kind of a political side to it of commenting on the kind of the caste system in India and the haves and the have nots and the way that the lower classes are abused by the upper classes. Like it's, it's pulling all of this stuff in so that each sequence has a little bit more to it than what could be there at face value. And there are a lot of ways where this is a character story, where it's diving into his character and the tragedy that has driven him and the way that he's growing, learning throughout the entire film, both in the physical fighting sense as well as in the spiritual sense. He's evolving as a person, but he's so defined by the tragedy of his past that... Um, it is very much, well, a tragedy. <laughs> you can summarize this movie with a very straightforward, simple plot synopsis, but you could also unpack it and do this much longer elaboration about all the symbolism, all, about all the cultural implications, about everything that's being explored, about the ways that people misuse political power and religious beliefs to get them to fall in line. It's all kind of in there while being in a story that's fairly straightforward, Final one to talk about here, it is a movie that just has all sorts of very cool imagery in it. Of course, you have like the high contrast silhouette imagery, bright, bold colors in some of these environments that they're in. But also, um, as we kind of go into the, explore the culture more, there's all sorts of shots of art and uh, nature. And just, there's a certain eye for beautiful imagery in the film that I think works rather nicely. Final thing to mention here, like I said, I was at the world premiere, so it was a packed theater with 1,200 people in it. Dev Patel introduced the film, uh, the cast crew were all there in the theater with us, so premieres at South by Southwest tend to be very lively, tons of energy in the room. That was the case with this movie, and anytime he took his shirt off, the room was like, what? going wild anytime he defeated one of our opponents that we hated like the crowd went nuts oh my gosh the action the score the soundtrack I mean, it's mind-blowing incredible i loved it i had a blast but when the movie ended the before the credits were even done rolling he walked out on stage and the audience gave him a two minute long standing ovation while he started crying now, every single movie at South by Southwest that has its world premiere in the Paramount Theater gets a big response. But I was there for, I think, nine world premieres, nine or ten world premieres. None of them got a standing ovation the way Monkey Man did. Really enjoyed it. Tons of action. Action that I was not expecting. And 12th film at South by for a standing ovation. It's great. So the audience in that room was very excited as the film ended and enjoyed what they got. Now, some of the praise that I saw coming out of that showing on Twitter, the Rotten Tomato score I thought was perhaps a little bit exaggerated and missing some of perhaps the faults here. So let's move on to the bad. And as I mentioned in the positive, Patel tried to bring in a bunch of different influences into the film, which does give it all sorts of interesting flavor and spice. But as he's also a first time director, I don't know that he was fully able to balance all of the parts and the pieces in the smoothest fashion. So you get a movie that can be fairly uneven in pretty much all of the different senses. Like you, you appreciate, you enjoy that it's not just this very simple, straightforward story without layers and depth to it, but it doesn't integrate all of the elements in one seamless fashion. And I think the place where this is kind of most obviously evident is in the pacing, where the film has really two big action set pieces that you, you see in the trailers with him battling through this tower. And he even drew comparisons to Game of Death, the Bruce Lee film. You have a couple of different set pieces in there. And when those happen, they're long, they're satisfying, they're exactly what you want them to be. But there's only two of these sequences. And so the first one's like 35, 40 minutes into the movie. And the next one is like an hour and 25 minutes into the movie. So it's kind of a, 
a kind of a slow buildup and you're kind of waiting for the film to kick into high gear. It kicks into high gear. And then once that sequence ends, slams on the brakes and we kind of build the character back up. He grows strength, knowledge, wisdom, improves himself. And then we get another slam bang finale action set piece. But it just feels like it's slow, slow, fast, slow. And you have this kind of real big dip in the middle where we're including all of this culture and all of these stories that he was raised with, training montage, we're learning about all the politics and all these groups. There's all this exposition dumped around the you know hour mark in the film that goes on for quite a while before we get back to the action. And there's a little bit of the, the tournament fighting stuff in there, but because they're not in a the grander sense plot moving forward action set pieces, it, it doesn't have the thrill and the excitement that you necessarily want and need to give the story that forward momentum in oomph. Going back to that John Wick comparison, before anyone saw the movie, people were calling it kind of Indian John Wick. That's really not what this is. It does not have the relentless pacing of a John Wick movie. It's much more thoughtful, reflective. It's much more about this tragic character and getting to know him and why he's on this journey, everything that he lost. We're exploring all of that not just going from action set piece to action set piece to action set piece. You just have to go in with proper expectations that this is not balls to the wall, action start to finish. It's not even trying to be that. It wants to have all these other layers to it, but I don't think it did that in the smoothest fashion. It touches on a lot of things. It drops a lot of things in there, but it doesn't feel entirely cohesive as just like this smooth single vision. As a directorial debut, trying to make a mark, I think it does that really well. I really dug the film. I think it's really good. And I think it shows the potential for what he can do in the future. There are a few wrinkles that needed to be ironed out. Real quick, before I give you my final thoughts, be sure to join me down below in the comment section. What's your excitement level for Monkey Man? And if you're in the future, what did you think about it? Also, by the time South by Southwest is over, I think I'm going to have seen 14 different movies. I'm gonna review about a third of those in individual videos. And then also I'm gonna have my video covering all of the films that I saw, ranking them, giving my thoughts on them. Highly encourage you to check that out because it'll probably put some movies on your radar that you haven't heard about quite yet. When you put it all together, Monkey Man is a stylized action film that adds a number of layers to a fairly straightforward plot elevating the entire thing. There are some wrinkles that need to be ironed out. It is uneven in particular with the pacing, but this is a solid action film that has its own unique identity. Overall, it's a B plus. On the entertainment scale, I'll give this one a 7.5. And if you're an action fan, see this one in the theaters. It is worth checking out. It is worth supporting a film that's a little bit different and does something new with action movies and tries to elevate a fairly straightforward plot line that we've seen before. Also be on the lookout for my other South by Southwest coverage. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.